Welcome and hello to our session about flow photochemistry at our virtual open house here at Fraunhofer IMM. My name is Thomas Rehm. I am senior scientist and responsible for the research field photochemistry. I'd like to introduce myself a little bit more in detail. I studied chemistry at the University of Würzburg and obtained my PhD at the same university working on supramolecular polymer chemistry with Professor Carsten Schmuck. After that, I joined the work group of Professor Frank Wirtner and studied supramolecular dye chemistry at the interface to biological macromolecules. In 2011, I joined Fraunhofer IMM and initiated research topics within the field of flow photochemistry. In the beginning, I'd like to explain some reasons why we started to work on photochemistry and photocatalysis. These topics became very important in the recent years as several academic work groups applied visible light as sole energy for photocatalysis. This allowed the conversion of complex and sensitive molecules like those in active pharmaceutical ingredients. Hence, from an industrial point of view, photocatalysis allows the synthesis of important building blocks under very mild conditions. As a first example, we can mention the synthesis of artemisinine as API for malaria treatment. Here, singlet oxygen formation is most relevant as key step in the final synthesis route. Late stage fluorination reactions allow the incorporation of either fluorine atoms or fluorinated side chains into molecules. With such functional groups, one can influence the pharmacokinetics of an API or other characteristics like the pH value. In combination with other catalyst classes like organocatalysts or earth abundant metal catalysts, asymmetric synthesis or CC and C heteroatom bond formation become possible. And one important trend needs to be mentioned as well photochemical assisted biocatalysis. Visible light photocatalysis is highly compatible with biocatalysis and offers a broad application range for API synthesis under very mild conditions. As mentioned above, the use of visible light in conjunction with LED technology allows a wavelength specific irradiation without costly heat management and safety issues as it is the case for classic mercury or xenon lamps. Finally, there is a great progress in the synthesis of tailor-made dyes and sensitizers which supersede iridium or ruthenium or any other expensive noble metal. Now we heard some really good reasons for photocatalysis with visible light. But the question arises why it is especially interesting to go to flow mode and perform photocatalysis in microreactors. Actually chemistry with light and technology is a pretty good match. We all know the problems of photochemistry in batch reactors with over irradiation and low substrate concentration in the reaction solution. In the case of flow photochemistry, we are able to irradiate the reaction solution as fine liquid stream inside a capillary or in an open microchannel. Such a setup allows full irradiation under highly defined conditions, and due to the fact that we have such a small light path for the available light, we can go to much higher concentrations in flow, but maintain full irradiation. Another important topic is the mixing of substrates. In the case of singlet oxygen formation, we must have a high level of oxygen gas inside the solution for efficient interaction with the sensitizer and the substrate in close proximity. This can be perfectly done with slug flow in capillaries or in microchannels open to the atmosphere. Contrary to batch processing, the operator can control the time of irradiation of the reaction solution by the flow rate and prevents this way any over irradiation and possible product degradation. Finally, photoreactors can be scaled up easily compared to batch reactors. This allows a straightforward transfer from lab to pilot production. As a first example from our lab, I'd like to show you our efforts in singlet oxygen formation. This reactive intermediate has a very short lifetime from nanoseconds to milliseconds in solution. Hence, it must be produced in situ 
for efficient application having a constantly high amount of oxygen in solution. So we need a tool to mix gas and liquid very efficiently. We use either porphyrins or rose bengal, as they are well known and stable sensitizers for singlet oxygen production. The most relevant reaction classes for singlet oxygen in the synthetic chemistry is the 4 plus 2 cycle addition and the oxidation of benzylic positions either from toluene to alcohols or from alcohols to aldehydes for example. We use the euglone synthesis as benchmark reaction in which 1,5-dihydroxynephthalene is converted by a 4 plus 2 cycle addition into the natural product. You might know the substance from the green shell of walnuts. An especially good tool for the in-situ formation of singlet oxygen is our falling film mic reactor. It is a device that allows gas liquid solid contacting within one housing and irradiation with light of desired wavelength through the inspection window made of quartz glass. The key component is the so-called reaction plate which offers parallel and wet chemically etched microchannels aligned on one stainless steel plate. The reaction solution is pumped from upper backside over a slit into the channels where the solution breaks down by gravity. Capillary forces then wet the channel walls under formation of very thin liquid films in the 10 micrometer range. Under these conditions, reactive gas can flow in countercurrent against the liquid stream resulting in an excellent gas mass transfer into the solution. This behavior is visualized in the movie that you can see on the right side. An aqueous solution of phenolphthalein flows down the falling film microreactor and interacts with carbon dioxide gas flowing from bottom to top. Approximately in the middle of the reaction plate you can see the solution changing its color. This indicates that CO2 is diffused into the solution resulting in a pH value change and decolorization of the indicator solution. We performed our first experiments with rose bengal which absorbs in the green region of the solar spectrum. We applied four LED rays, cold white light, actinic blue at 410 nanometers, royal blue at 450 nanometers and green light at 520 nanometers. As you can see on the right, green and white light gave the highest yields with 34% and 51%. But due to a more selective green irradiation, green light allows a little bit higher selectivity of 93%. By the switch to tetracarboxyphenyl porphyrin as sensitizer, we have an even better possibility to selectively irradiate on the Sore band of the porphyrin chromophore at 410 nanometers. Under violet or actinic blue light irradiation, we can reach a conversion of 76% at 99% selectivity. For both reactions, the same conditions have been chosen. Pure oxygen gas, which can be applied here safely, as we only use small volumes. And a residence time as short as 19 seconds for a single run through the reactor. The results give a short insight into the possibilities of flow photochemistry and singlet oxygen formation for selective oxidations. As another very important topic, I'd like to introduce our work on arylation reactions, which we have done in collaboration with Magnus Rüpping from Aachen University and Kaust. The idea here is the substitution of noble metal catalysts for CC bond formation. The work group of Professor Rüpping used counter ion stabilized diazonium salts and electron rich heterarenes as benchmark substrates. The reaction was catalyzed with titanium dioxide and the resulting diazoethers with the solvent over the semiconductor. These intermediates can be excited with blue light resulting in the activation of the diazonium salt and nitrogen release with subsequent bond formation with the heteroareal. A broad scope of heteroarenes were screened with furane, thiophene and pyridine as examples. We transferred this reaction into flow by applying our falling film microreactor with titanium dioxide immobilized in the microchannels. Standard analysis was done 
with transmission electron microscopy and EDX, as well as BET nitrogen gas adsorption measurements. We use royal blue light with LED arrays and a small lab plant for conducting our experiments, as you can see on the right side. As you can see here on the left side, the transfer to flow mode yielded in most cases equal to better yields compared to batch mode. But, and this is the most important point by going to flow, we can intensify the synthesis process by a large factor of about 6000. This high number is possible due to the highly advanced mixing of liquid and solid in the reactor with strong and defined LED irradiation and fundamentally shorter residence time of approximately 9 seconds in the falling film reactor. Our last example is a further advancement of the intensification mentioned above for the CH relation. But before I go into detail, I'd like to introduce my colleague Christoph Deckers. He is working on his PhD thesis at our institute and the following results have been developed and obtained by Christoph in the last months. The intention for this work was to cancel any metal catalysts for the CH relation reaction. In addition, the diazonium salts must be prepared in situ to avoid the handling of reactive intermediates outside the reactor or their storage on the bench. Finally, we have also aimed for more relevant building blocks, which have functional groups already in the hydrocarbon scaffold. They can be either used as probes for analysis, like the trifluoromethylene group for 19F online NMR analysis, or, and this is more important for later applications as APIs, the possibility to derivatize these functional groups. As you can see, an already published method from the group of Oliver Kappel did not work well with our building blocks and reaction conditions. The idea to use the anhydride as intermediate during the diazonium salt formation as light-sensitive chromophore resulted only in low yields and low selectivity. Hence, it was necessary to redesign the synthesis route. By switching the counter ion from tetrafluoroborate to trifluoroacetate, we were able to generate in situ fully soluble diazonium salts of high activity towards interaction with the arene. We optimized our process with benzene as it has rather low activity, but the easiest substitution pattern for analysis. With a residence time of 75 minutes, we were able to obtain a yield of 80% and an excellent selectivity of 99% without any homocoupling. As you can see below, we screened several valuable building blocks with halogens on the arene or other functionalities for further derivatization. One important point needs to be discussed as well. We performed the reaction under medium pressure of approximately 17 bar in order to maintain a full liquid stream without nitrogen gas lags. This was necessary for the 19F NMR online analysis. Any gas lags would have made the analysis rather complicated. In the end, I'd like to give you an overview on offers that we usually have for our customers when they get in contact with us for the first time. Not only for flow photochemistry, but also for all other subtopics that we address with our flow chemistry technology, we perform the transfer of batch processes to continuous flow. Often we do not know all about the processes of our customer. So the first step is to do a feasibility study to fully understand the conditions and the pitfalls. Based on this information we can judge if a transfer to flow is reasonable and scalable, as this is the most often question from our customers. If we have a positive evaluation, then we can proceed with our reactor design, adaptation and scale up, of course with the necessary environment of a plant. Based on this track, we can offer our customers a reliable method for bringing their process and their ideas to continuous flow. In the case of photochemistry and catalysis, I already presented some of the most important transformations that we can perform in our reactors and plants. But of course, we already have tested other relevant reaction classes like cyanation, fluorinations, isomerization, but also nanomaterial fabrication like silver nanoparticles. With this closing remark, I'd like to say thank you for listening. 
I hope you got a good impression of our work and intention why we love to do flow chemistry. If you have any other questions or if you want to check our technology for your process, please do not hesitate to contact me via email or phone. So thank you again and now I'd like to invite you to join me for a visit in our lab while we demonstrate our last efforts in metal-free CC coupling in continuous flow mode. So a warm welcome to our fine chemicals lab at our institute. Um, as announced in my last slide of my talk, I'd like to show you our latest um, yeah, process, latest approach regarding um, photocatalyzed carbon-carbon uh, coupling. Um, it's a rather straightforward lab plan. We use um, HPLC pumps for feeding. We have got our thermostat to maintain temperature. Um, we use a capillary photoreactor, which I will um, in detail describe um, in, in the next few minutes, and also for online analysis, an online NMR spectrometer for fluorine 19 NMR spectroscopy. So, um, what we are doing here is we use um, diazonium salt chemistry to prepare in situ reactive intermediates. And in a second step, in a photochemical catalyzed step, we then couple this um, diazonium salt to an arene moiety. In this, in, in this um, example, we use benzene as most easiest um, um, arene moiety. So in the first step, we use two pumps in order to feed our aniline and TFA reaction solution um, to a T-piece mixer, where from the second line, our um, alkyl nitrate um, is feed again inside into a residence loop which is tempered at 20 degrees and has a residence time of roughly 20 minutes. So we create in situ our diazonium salt which is then later on mixed with the benzene in a second T-piece. So the reaction solution itself then runs in into our capillary reactor. Um, it's a double layer capillary reactor which means that we have got two layers of FEP capillaries inside so we can either have a longer residence time by coupling both of them or we can run two different reactions or we can run two reactions in a sub, uh, subsequent manner. Um, important point is as well that it is um, water cooled so we can run down to minus 20 degrees from temperature and we have got exchangeable LED high power LED arrays which we can introduce inside the reactor which are cooled as well in order to maintain their emission um, wavelength as well. We have got UVA, so about um, 365 nanometer and it can go up to red emission um, but also panchromatic white LEDs are available as well. It just depends on the process you want to run in the reactor. Um, we've got a commercially available NMR spectrometer for online NMR analysis um, as you might know, diazonium catalyst uh, in chemistry um, is um, yeah, a reaction at which a lot of nitrogen gas evolves. In order to use the NMR spectros uh, spectroscopy for online analysis, we have to maintain the gas inside the solution so that we have got one liquid stream of reaction solution that we can analyze. Um, in order to achieve this, we run the complete system under pressure. In this case, we are roughly about 80 bars, uh, 18 bars. And in order to um, perform the analysis under pressure, we designed and manufactured a new um, high pressure NMR cell, which is made out of peak, no longer glass, but um, of, of peak, which is high pressure resistant. So we can go here up to, one, uh, up to 25 bars. So as you can see here, we've got an outlet stream from the um, NMR spectrometer and after the back pressure valve, we've got um, the evolution of gas so we can be sure that the reaction is running properly. In order to check the reaction itself, now we can start our online analysis. Um, what you can see here is a, a short analysis. We only just use eight scans and um, while the spectrum is evolving you can see a first peak here which is more the TFA so our reference 
at roughly um, minus 75, um, min minus 75 um, ppm and in reverse our product is evolving at roughly minus 65 ppm. So if we would run um, a much longer scan then we would have also a better um, um, noise to signal resolution but um, the idea was just to show you how it works out and how we can use the online NMR spectrometer in conjunction with our two-step um, synthesis process of BR rules um, made out of diazonium salt and inside the photoreactor without um, metal catalysts, without any kinds of sensitizers and so on. So with that I'd like to um, say goodbye and I'd like to thank you for your attention and of course if you have any questions or comments about our work please do not hesitate to contact me by my email address or by phone. Thank you.